I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to be exploring Logic's Fat Effects, which is a multi effects processor. Let's see what it can do. So, within the multi effects options here, we've got Fat Effects, which is uh, this plugin here. And a bit like step effects, what we'll find is that we've got a sort of modular approach to effects processing. What that means is we've got lots of separate modules which can be switched on or off independently so that we can pick out the ones that we want to use or combine them to create a sort of monstrous multi effects arrangement. To get a sense of what this can do, it's actually a good idea to switch off modules and, and sort of employ them individually so that you can hear exactly what's going on. So let's do that now. You can see anything that's kind of greyed out isn't being used. So let's switch off distortion and the bass enhancer and compressor. We'll come back to all of these and we'll just start with bandpass, which is up in the top left hand corner. This gives us sort of classic bandpass filtering. I can select the frequency range I want to hear with a sort of low end and a high end control. And I've actually got resonance controls for both the low and the high end as well, as well as multi algorithmic approaches to bandpass filtering. So I can choose the algorithm I want to use. Let's go for edgy and then I can hear how this works. So straight away you can hear, particularly when I boost that high resonance, that we've got a very powerful bandpass filter here and lots of different algorithms to explore there as well. Let's turn off the bandpass filter and come over to the top right hand corner where we've got a more regular filter. This is a multi-mode filter, which means I can choose again from a really rich long range of options. Again, I've got bandpass options, but I've got low pass filters here as well and high pass filters and a whole range of comb filters and some more out there filter types as well. So what I can do here is to select the type of low pass filter I want. Let's go for something quite rich and quite deep. So 24 decibels per octave filter. And then I've got a set of controls that's going to be familiar to anyone who's worked with filtering before. My overall cutoff frequency, resonance control, a drive amount, how hard we're going to drive the filter stage, and then a mix control, which allows for what we call parallel processing. At 0%, we're going to hear none of the effect. At 100%, just the effect. And in between, a balance between the dry and the wet signals. Here's the filter. You can hear that drive amount, particularly on the kick drum, push nice and hard. We get this really rich distortion that's coming directly from the filter drive. Okay, let's back that down a little bit because later I'm going to reintroduce this. So let's just have some settings that aren't going to blow the speakers up when we come back to it in a little while. Let's turn the filter off and come over to the distortion section as well. Now this is amazingly powerful, this little uh, module, even though we've only got three controls, we'll begin to get a sense of the depth of what this distortion module can do when we simply look at the assorted range of distortion types. So even within this module, I've got all of these different ways of exploring distortion. Do I want the sort of soft saturation that comes from sort of tape? Do I want a bit crusher, so a sort of early form of digital distortion? Do I want to work with uh, tube saturation? All of these uh, are available to me and all of them are going to color the sound in different ways. What distortion does is to add harmonic content and the various algorithms here do that in different ways. So some will be particularly extreme and a bit more white noisy and a bit more like sort of overdriven electric guitars and others will be a bit more sort of considered or digital or one way or another just providing that extra harmonic content in different ways. So let's go with a, a bit crusher for now. What I then get are two separate um, sort of controls which allow me to drive this distortion in different ways. Let's have a look at the way that the bit crusher or this particular distortion uh, unit can work. So you can see that we're getting a really profound difference, this extra harmonic content that comes from this particular choice. And again, lots of things that we can explore there as well. 
And as we go through, we can see that there are lots of other types of effects here as well. What we can do with the bass enhancer is to go through and choose a frequency around which we want to add extra bass content. And we can then choose the amount of that that we want to add. So here we're choosing our core fundamental frequency. And then we've got a type of way of working with that. Again, different algorithms to explore here with uh, sort of warmth control here, allowing us to pick out the kick drum maybe and add a bit of extra weight to it. So that's a nice way of going through the low end content of any loop or sound that you apply this to. Remember, we're working with audio, but you could just as easily set this effect up on one of Logic's soft instruments instead, a software instrument, and uh, add these effects as well. We've also got a sort of two dial compression stage as well, which is quite nice. Again, lots of individual uh, algorithms to allow us to choose the type of compressor that we want to work with. But then we've got a sort of one dial approach to compression here, where the further I go this way, the more sort of smashed the sound becomes. We can also control the release time here as well. So we're going for some pretty extreme um, compression settings there, but it's a really nice way of just introducing a slightly more smash sound to begin to see how compression can work. And actually, even with just these two dials, we can get some really interesting effects. Down here at the bottom, we've got an opportunity to introduce movement into some of the effects that we're working with. We've got an envelope stage, which allows me to choose a target and then attack, release, and depth times. So if I want to, I can have, for example, the filter cutoff being, uh, or at least an envelope being applied to that so that we get movement uh, to the sound over time. Similarly, what I could do would be to switch that off and instead apply an LFO. I can choose the shape that I want to work with here. We could go, for example, a sine wave, which is just gonna produce these undulations. We can then choose the speed at which we want that to happen and the depth control as well how hard this is going to work. Remember, in order to hear these effects, having picked the target, you'll need to make sure that you've turned on the module to which they're being applied. So by switching on LFO1, we should now hear movement to the filter cutoff, and we should hear a lot of it because I've turned the depth up to 100%. So for a more subtle effect, I could turn the depth down. And what we'll see as I do that is that this little sort of blue surround on this dial, our target parameter, is narrowing to show us the range over which it'll be working instead. We could turn the overall cutoff down a little bit as well. So we've got an envelope stage and we've got two separate LFOs so we could pick out two different parameters there if we wanted to, to get lots of movement into this effect. And then lastly, in the bottom right hand corner, we've got a mastering stage. Now this isn't mastering your entire track, this is simply going to be applied to the sound on which you've placed this, um, this processor. But what we can do again is to choose a sort of type of limiting, hard limiting or soft limiting. Again, choose an overall mix, so we can actually use this as a parallel processor between the original source sound and the processed one. We can drive the input stage and control the output stage as well. So this is just going to provide us with a limiting stage, and either it's going to be profound and really dramatic if we use the hard limiter, or just something a little bit more soft, uh, uh, soft if we go for the soft limiter option here at the end instead. So let's keep our LFO in for a little bit. We're going to just turn the depth down a little bit so we're getting a bit less of that effect. What we'll do is bring the distortion back in. I was enjoying that very much. I think we'll boost the bass a little bit as well. And what we'll also do is set a compressor a little bit less extremely than we were before. So what we're doing here is adding some distortion to give us some extra sort of color in the sound. We're also processing the dynamics a fair bit and processing tone by making sure that the filter is being affected by this LFO. Let's just have a listen and make some changes as we go through.
So even it's just sort of tempting to start even thinking about arranging as you go. Remember, if we enter automation mode before making these changes, all of these parameter changes will actually be recorded. So you almost sort of start getting a performance out of just a single beat loop. And you can see that with fat effects, it's possible to combine a number of effects at the same time to produce some really interesting results.